There are a select Hang on. few. Cue music. Oh, uh, yeah. You might be wondering why we're playing flash dance. All will be revealed in a moment. It will. Because in you know seconds. what? <laughs> there are a few people in this world who can go by one name. You've got Bono, mm. you've got Oprah, mm. you've got Adele, mm. and you've got Shaq. Or as the love Shaq, as I like to refer to him. <laughs> NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal is one of the most successful basketball players of all time, but he's also a businessman, a DJ, and most surprisingly, I think, a terrific dancer for a bloke who's seven foot one. since you've been here. It's been a long time between dances. It has. Why is it taking you so long to come home? Been working. Yeah. And I've always loved the Australian people. My favorite moment is facing little Shane. Oh, yeah. yeah he was he was tough. Uh, Andrew Gaze, Luke Longley. Mm. So I've always had a special place in my heart for people in Australia. Australia punches above its weight uh, with basketball, don't we? Um, no, you guys are players. good. Yeah, no, you guys are you guys are really good. There's only 400, 300, 400 guys in the world that are in the NBA. So if you can represent your country and then come and play in the, the toughest sport in the world, that just tells me that you're one hell of a player. The Orlando Magic selects Shaquille O'Neal from Louisiana State University. I was looking at some footage of you yesterday and when you got drafted and then it was like, it, do you miss those days? Or? No, not at all. My father gave me an ultimatum. Yeah. The ultimatum was get your education because if you fail out when you turn 18, you're joining the army. I didn't want to do that, so I had to shape up. Jeez, your life would have been a whole lot different. I um, wouldn't be here right now. That's right. Yeah. You know, you would have been a big target. Yeah, I would have. <laughs> I would have. He might have gone back there. Yeah, I would have. <laughs> I've never seen that. A lot of people talk about rich and famous. I never wanted to be rich. I just wanted to buy my parents a house. Never had a house. They never had anything of their own. Like they would, you know, do what most parents do sacrifice for their kids. Mm. So the little money that they had, they had to take care of me. Uh, four sisters and a brother. The only thing I wanted as a youngster was music equipment and basketball. Yeah. So I used to get a little box, a little Sony Walkman. Growing up with four sisters, what was that like? Were they the boss? Two of them were, were, were tougher yeah. and they taught me how to be tough. Kids in Australia, if they look up to you, um, you've achieved everything. Is there one thing that you'd tell them? Listen to your mommy and daddy. Yeah, that's, that's the right. first thing, you gotta, you gotta listen. Second thing, I would say follow your dreams. And three, whoever your favorite player is, steal everything that he's done. <laughs> steal it. Who was your favorite? Dr. J and oh, Magic yeah, Johnson. Yeah. Dr. J because he was smooth and, and Magic Johnson because he had just had fun and he was smiling. Best player you played against? Probably Michael Jordan. Yeah. And yeah, Michael Jordan's the best ever. You know, I grew up watching karate movies, so the basis of all karate movies that I watched, at some point, the young student must kill the master to become the master. So Mike's the master, and everybody knew in order to get to the finals, you gotta go past Mike, and I was the last one to accomplish that. Did you like that karate move? I did. I liked it. He's a little scared. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Don't you know I got king out of three when I church, I was church man. The DJing, um, I know like DJ Fish is this Aussie guy. Um, yeah, he, he's, he's the where, best. Does that, where does that come from? You, you listen, you, you used to listen to the Walkman and now you're properly DJing. I've been DJing since 87. Yeah. So I got away from it when I started doing my rap albums, but DJing in these big uh, arenas gives me the same adrenaline feeling as being in the game. Really? And it's similar to being a player. Yeah. Like as a player, Moms, dads, kids, they pay their money to see you put on a great show. Yeah. So I respect the fact that these hardworking kids, they put their money on the line to come see me. So 
I plan on going hard while I'm in Australia. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll, I'll be in the front row. And deal. You'll just be, I'll be the sweaty guy. All right, deal. <laughs> Great to see you, my man. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. It's the sort of thing that he likes. <laughs> I like that. He is unreal. Yeah. And, um, I mean, how did you get him to do the dance? Well, I didn't, ha didn't, I didn't have to get him to do anything. He wanted to be part of that. Oh, really? Uh, it was a little, you know, I don't want to dance with the shack. You, you know, he's, he's, he's just a massive human being. Mm. Seven foot one, uh, and then, mm. then his hands are like... You Your know, tush looks so tiny. It, it is. <laughs> Sure. It's a tiny tush. <laughs> it's a tiny tush with his big hands around it. <laughs> it's just the best thing ever. Oh, he's gentle. Shark is in Australia for an evening with Shaquille O'Neal presented by the Hour Group. They do terrific work. The events have sold out, but tickets are available to watch via main event on Fox Sports and KO today. So get into it. He's a fun guy and he's done everything. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk with and him. And that was a brilliant interview, by the way. Yeah. That was very, it was, very fun. And cool. very, you know, listen to your mummy and daddy. Very good advice.